thanks for uh, joining me here today. What we're looking to discuss today is the uh, impacts and challenges that clients in the Asia region are gonna uh, encounter when we convert to T plus one in 2024. So Brent, I'll start with you right now. What do you see will be some of the challenges for the clients in Asia who are trading in the, typically the US market right now? Yeah, Jim, you know, in my mind, moving to T plus one is gonna be challenging in and of itself is going to be challenging oh, yeah. as yeah. it is yeah. but i think for our apac client base they have some you know unique challenges that they're going to face primarily because of the time zone differences right, and everything right. makes sense you know one thing is you know the the tighter time frames themselves yep. you know and the time zone differences you know our clients are going to need to look at what they need to do um, to meet that trade date affirmation um, deadline that's right. been given to the market by the SEC and DTC. Right. So they're going to have to look operationally. What changes do they need to make in order to, to meet those tighter time frames? And that's right. going to be challenging. Right. Um, another thing I believe is going to be funding. Mm. You know, they're going to have to look at what's required to ensure that they have funding in place um, for settlement date in right. the U.S. market. And right. again, all challenges that are brought more in scope because of the time zone differences. Right. Okay. And lastly, even is just things like, you know, holidays, right. for example, where there may be APAC holidays that go against the U S market being open, you know, how are they going to meet those challenges? Do they need to look at resourcing on holidays mm. in order to, um, process trades successfully in the U S market? Right. So all of those are, unique challenges I think our clients are going to have to really look at you know their models and determine what changes they may need to make to be successful with the T plus one move. Yeah that makes sense and uh, thanks for highlighting those. Um, I'll switch over to you Steve. Um, what do you think uh, might be some more challenges or, or difficulties clients in Asia would be encountering uh, going forward? One area we've run into uncertainty around is how the affirmation process works in the U.S. market and how that really impacts our, our APEC clients, right? Sure, sure. Um, historically, the affirmations have taken a backseat to market settlement. Um, however, going forward, they're going to be brought to the forefront of the trade life cycle and facilitate a more straight through settlement process. Um, and really, we've been engaging with our clients via direct conversations hosting office hours, preparing materials, all to help kind of bring bring forth those new requirements, understand the models that the clients are using today and what State Street can offer. Um, so we're really just being communicative as we can with our clients in that region. I think one other big point to make is, is timing is gonna present a challenge, obviously. Um, right. We're prepared to still conduct settlement outside of the broker dealer ID affirmation process. Um, so that really shouldn't be a problem, you know, impacting with the actual settlement in the market. Um, but we do strongly urge our clients to consult with their internal legal teams just to really understand how these new rules and regulations are going to impact them. Right, right. Well, thanks for highlighting those. Um, you know, I really appreciate you guys bringing the highlights out, the challenges that clients from Asia may encounter going forward with the T plus one accelerated settlement cycle.